Hi, I'm Shashank Bhargav and you're listening to Three Things, the Indian Express news show. Conan, usually on the show, we look at three stories and that's why the name. But today, as we sometimes do, we'll only be focusing on one story. So tell us what is this story? What are we talking about? So we are talking about an investigation that is being carried out by the Delhi police on a kidney racket case. This, by the way, is the Indian Express's health editor, Conan Sharif. This is a very unique kidney racket case. One, because all of these cases relate to Bangladeshi patients. Second, it now focuses on this whole unregulated medical tourism market. Third, that it involves an arrest of a doctor. In usual kidney racket cases which happen, this usually used to happen in three, four centers, West Bengal, parts of Jharkhand, you know, where there used to be only middlemen, guys who could connect the donor to the recipient, you know, the poor donors to the recipient. And there are multiple rackets that have happened through the years. But here it goes beyond those, you know, this, this whole so-called kidney racket uh, syndicates, you know, it, it goes beyond that. There is a medical tourism angle. There are approvals now from an international authority. Everything that is being fabricated and forged at a diplomatic level and a great insight into how India's unregulated medical tourism sector, which is driven by profits, is now being misused by this entire syndicate. Now, the Indian Express investigated this entire case. Tell us where exactly did this kidney racket take place? So it's a very interesting uh, kidney racket case. The doctor used to consult at Apollo Sarita Vihar, which is a Delhi's biggest private hospital. So she's a nephrologist. So she consults in the morning. She performs most of the surgeries at Apollo Noida, uh, where the transplant surgery is happening. When you get the donor, then the surgery is performed here. Uniquely, you know, under her contract with Apollo Sarita Vihar, has a clause which says that she could practice somewhere else whenever she has free time. She is not bound only to practice at uh, Apollo Sarita Vihar. So she has also performed in Yatharth Noida. Yeah, both Apollo and Yatharth are very prominent hospitals. Yeah. So the arrests that have happened of PEEP, the syndicate, is basically related to the surgeries that she performed at Yatharth Noida. Although she's a doctor who's associated with Sarita Vihar, has also performed surgeries in Apollo Noida, but this case particularly is at Yatharth Noida. So it involves three hospitals, you know, so it's a very unique case even in that scenario. And what is the name of this doctor? The doctor is uh, Dr. Vijay Rajakumari. You know, she's a very senior doctor with almost 14 to 15 years of experience at Apollo Noida. She studied uh, in CMC, where it was a very prestigious medical college, and she's a transplant surgeon. And Conan, to understand how this kidney racket was operating we need to understand how organ donations work in India. So tell us, how do people usually go about doing that? What does one have to do to donate an organ? And what does one have to do if they're a foreigner? So any organ transplant, the first step is your treating doctor, the doctor you're consulting, has to give in writing that this person has to undergo an organ transplant. Then the process starts. The process starts at two levels. First, on the clinical side, Second are the approval side. Clinical side in the sense that you find a donor, the donor has to match, there are a lot of tests that are done, a lot of things, you know, the donor might match in terms of the blood group but can get rejected when you do the other tests, which are the antibody tests, all of that. So that is done by the nephrologist, you know, and there are a lot of tests that are done. Then comes on the committee, you know, the, the, there is an authorization committee that is set up. So in India, the law is very stringent on paper. What the law say is that if you have to donate a kidney, if you're a donor, you have to be a close, what the government says is a near relative, which is your siblings, your mother, your brother, your sister or your wife. Then there is the non-near relative is what the government says. That can happen in rare circumstances where they, you can prove that there's no coercion, there's no money involved, any transaction is involved. But here you have to get an approval from the authorization committee. There's a government-appointed committee that sits. It involves the chief medical officer of the district. In some cases, it involves even the district magistrate. There are lawyers who sit on it. There are people from the legal fraternity. There are three doctors who sit on it. 
and the tough questions that are put to you know the donor and the recipient this is the case when you're not a close relative not a close relative you know to ask them why do you want to donate and they come to a conclusion okay there is no money involved and then you know that approval is given but even in this the problem is you never get non near relatives it's very tough to get non real relatives you know because people can survive with one kidney so that's why you can donate but the matching is very tough and then even to people to come forward and give is very rare right for someone who is not very close to you it's very difficult for them to donate an organ out of their own goodwill exactly exactly so that is what the process is for foreigners there is another layer of scrutiny that is involved which is what is called as a form 21 okay which is basically a non objection certificate from an embassy their country's embassy which is in india saying that we have looked at this donor recipient relationship we authorize that there is no money or transaction involved in this and you know we approve that it's a bona fide case basically they're saying we've looked into the matter everything is good on our end yeah exactly and then that is then looked into again by the authorization committee as well as the hospital authorization committee and then approval is given in this case the entire investigation revolves around that one form 21 document and because we're talking about a kidney racket one assumes that all the people involved in it they did not have the required forms the forms that they submitted were in fact forged they were all fabricated and forged which means that on paper they were shown to be non near relatives but they were not even relatives you know that's what it is so it basically what they created was fake family trees this is what our investigation is we got 7000 page document we looked into all of those 7000 pages we found this fascinating form 21s and then we had to put it on excel sheet and see who was the donor and who was the recipient we found 15 different relationship in a family tree you know in yathart as well as apollo what was shocking was in noida there was only one case of near relative which is a sister giving to brother in yathart there were zero cases of near relatives when and when it comes to the same doctor performing on indian patients all were brother sisters yeah, husband wife but when it came to these bangladeshi citizens every case was a far relative you know fake family trees your brothers sisters son things like that and what this fake family tree shows is there was so much nuance to it you know so to make sure under the indian law to make sure that the non relative is eligible you also have to show that the near relatives have been ruled out you can't directly say okay i have a second cousin who can donate so the second cousin has come forward no that's not how it works you can only go for a non relative when your near ones are out of the equation exactly so you have to show your father mother is non eligible you have to show then your siblings are not eligible then you have to show your siblings kids are non eligible and then your siblings husband so what happens is your siblings husband's brother is donating you know so it's very unusual yeah and how did they go about showing this that the near relatives of these people were not eligible so they have this ghost lab called raju diagnostics in dhaka a fictitious lab who basically first shows that of course the blood compatibility is there but then they show that these people are ineligible for kidney transplant because they have various comorbidities or they have various problems someone has blood sugar someone is suffering from cancer someone has just died you know a lot of cases fathers are all have died because of cancer then the approval says ki finally we have zeroed in on this person and this person is eligible hence he is donating it and it is very interesting that if the person is staying in an x district not even one single case that the donor was in this from the same district although from the same family they are from far off districts in bangladesh which clearly sort of shows that these are not blood related and what is fascinating is this form 21 to just get that you have to submit around 30 40 documents first you have to show your mother's father's marriage then they are then related to someone so all of those marriage certificates so all of the seals that have got from the houses of this so russell is the head of the syndicate from this house you know and he has boxes in his house where they usually store dates these have the seals and all of this is the same seals used in almost every approval you know it just shows the level of forgery they have police certificates they have trade certificates that they're working here you know they have bank account statements 
you know, forged bank account statements of various Dhaka banks. You know, you just put a name and then you can have the bank account statement. There are death certificate formats. You know, so around 900 word documents, all you have to do is put someone's name and you have the entire document. And then you have seals, similar seals. You know, seals of the embassy seals, seals of the local law ministry seals of Dhaka, you know, and then the judges from Dhaka. Those seals are available. So you just can't imagine the sophistication of this scam to get that once Form 21. Then what happens is, the accused are then friends with one guy in the embassy. Once they're ready, so they make call to this one guy and the approval comes. If we put the timing of the email trails on the Excel sheet. So the time difference between when this fictitious Raju Lab sends the email to the ministry and when it gets approved. What, what is that time difference like? So most of them happen the same day, but there are cases in two minutes, the approvals are coming. You know, there's 11 minutes, there are approvals, you know. So it clearly shows so much coordination at a diplomatic level. So now that is the problem with this investigation that, you know, there are so many documents now with the police, but most of the officials now have diplomatic immunity, especially the Bangladesh side. So it becomes very tough for them to take even the investigation forward. So the Indian police cannot take any action against people working in the Bangladesh embassy? No, they can't. They've written to the embassy seeking information on all of these documents that they have. In fact, on the approvals that they have, they've also sent the email trails to them, you know, but they still haven't got it. So all they have to focus is, you know, the arrest that they have made, the Bangladeshis in India. 164 statement is recorded before the magistrate, before the judge which is like an admissible sta- uh, evidence, unlike the statement which is recorded before the police, which is called the 161 statement. So that is one of the key things. And then there are call records and there are financial transactions. This middle man, Russell, has made hundreds of calls to the doctor's secretary. Wait, I think at this moment we should step back and introduce this Russell guy a bit more. You say he's one of the key accused in the case. Tell us a bit more about him. He's supposed to be a medical translator. Where is he based out of? So Russell's story is very fascinating. Like I told you in the start, Russell's story tells us about this dark underbelly of medical tourism in India. He's this Bangladeshi who comes in 2019 to India in search of a job. He himself gets caught in a kidney racket. He is a donor. Okay. So he's the victim. Exactly. Of another guy. Okay. So he has one kidney. He has one kidney. Then goes back, meets the guy who, you know, he, he gets some money, who gets forced him to, he meets him, finds out, okay, I can make money out of it, sets up a center in Bangladesh to get the donors, okay, he's to get them here, saying on the pretext of employment, is to take their passports and then, you know, say, I can't give you a passport, you have to donate this, I'm going to give you 3 to 4 lakh rupees, then you can go back. But here, what is fascinating is, now to increase his business, he collaborates with a medical tourism company called Medijon, which has an association with a very shady small healthcare company called Al Shifa Healthcare, which is in Shaheen Bagh in Southeast Delhi. So Al Shifa hires him. Al Shifa then has an agreement with Medijon. Medijon then turns out to be the business arm wing of Apollo. And this is how the business starts. So technically he gets an access to Apollo. Because he works for Al-Shifa Healthcare as a translator and he gets patients from Bangladesh. Al-Shifa provides business to Medijon because medical tourism provides basically, you know, their job is to get patients from outside India. Medijon then gives him access to Apollo. When he gets access to Apollo, he makes friends with this doctor secretary. Because he knew at that point of time, 2019, that this is the place that I was here, you know, for his own transplant. So for his own donation, you know. And then he makes friends with him. And during the seizure, you know, when they were arrested, when they arrested, Vikram is the secretary of the doctor. The exact documents that uh, Russell had, those almost exact documents even Vikram has. Those the same seals. Which sort of corroborates that everyone were involved in this. And but that's for a different patient. And this was for a different patient. But it's the same exact seals, you know, same format, same fake family trees, all of that. And this guy then says that I have done 25 to 30 of such things in a span of two years. He made one crore. There's no money trail because he says I purchased a land for 40 lakhs. 
build a mansion in Dhaka for sixty lakhs. Okay, he had just come back, you know, after building the house for his next round of clients. And there are a lot of documents that they've seized is about the transactions that have. So it's all in Bangladesh, you know. So this is a very fascinating story of again how they have created a very opaque system. So Apollo on paper is not related to Russell. But wait, you said that Medijern is sort of the business arm of Apollo, right? Yeah. And Medijern is the one that has an association with Alshifa. Yeah. And Russell is an employee of Alshifa. But what you're saying is that his association with Apollo, there's no paperwork for it. There's no paperwork. But here he has made transactions worth seventeen lakhs. We put it on Excel sheet and found out his UPI transactions because the bank statements are now with the police. Seventeen lakh worth on paper, you know, legal transactions in Apollo. That means he was literally coordinating everything for the patients. Why would a translator do that? Why would a translator of a small medical tourism company would be, you know, making transaction of seventeen lakh in a span of one year? That means he was actually involved in not just doing the job of a translator, but also, you know, facilitating the surgeries. And then, of course, the big, big thing is that. he gives evidence of how he got approvals how he was sent for approvals the guy who used to give us approvals in bangladesh embassy everything okay from the outside one would think that a place like apollo would be seeped in corporate bureaucracy and one would imagine that in a hospital as big as apollo everything would be on paper how is it that a hospital like that ends up associating with a dubious company like alshifa first there's a big loophole in the system you know gray areas which i'm highlighting is because this is something that government has to now regulate so i'll tell you the chain russell is employed with alshifa but does not have a formal agreement strange alshifa has an agreement with medijern and medijern is the business arm wing of apollo but apollo does not have any agreement with alshifa but apollo is actually making those payments commissions to Medijen, Medijen then indirectly pays to Al Shifa. Al Shifa then indirectly pays to this Russell. But that's like Apollo saying, "Hey, we are paying our business arm, but we don't have any idea who they are involved with." So that's what our investigation does: is it sort of lifts these opaque, you know, relationships that these big hospitals are having with small medical tourism companies just to drive business profits. and of course the police can't do anything about it but it just sort of highlights this big problem and conan how big is the medical tourism industry in india it is huge and officially i know that bangladesh uh, features in all the big corporate chains in india bangladesh is a very significant uh, chunk if you remember this year itself the government had eased the medical uh, visa norms for bangladeshis when their former prime minister was here you know before the regime changed happened there it's a big chunk it's also a big chunk for surgeries i'll give you a cost of maybe a hip implant it could be somewhere around 6 to 7 lakhs if even if you have a insurance coverage here somewhere in us it would be around 45 lakhs to 50 lakhs so we have belgium india is a huge destination for medical tourism and here there is a law because it involves living humans donating their organs you know so, so there's a big question mark how the system is that first of all you're manipulating the form 21 then the second thing is people are who are not supposed to be involved are getting involved in getting approvals why is a medical translator sitting and getting those approvals going to embassy why didn't the hospital not know about it you know and these are not one or two things you know approvals which are running in uh, hundreds of approvals that are happening by the way how many cases were handled by this doctor so this case investigates 25 which russell handled during the investigation what the police did was they asked for all the surgeries that she had done in these three hospitals and then we found out when we actually looked at those numbers and then put on excel sheet to understand who are donating and why so many you know and honestly we also read the records and it showed that they couldn't perform in apollo delhi because apollo delhi had barred bangladeshi citizens kidney transplant so they probably figured that something was up it was when you know that near relatives are not donating it's a big issue you know you heard now in india right there's a big waiting list that's what we say for kidney donation or liver donation we say there's a big waiting list so there are banks there is the organ bank 
you can get it from there but that's a rare thing so that's why you have your own relatives then coming forward and giving you know if you have to do the waiting period and then there's the whole concept of whether the organ is suitable you know it can get rejected and all of that so you can't really wait for that so then you bring your own relatives to donate so apollo sarta vihar had already barred organ transplantations for bangladeshis so then this doctor did these procedures in apollo noida which again is a big hospital and in such a case it's hard to believe that only one doctor and his secretary would know about it right there have to be other people in the hospital who probably knew what was going on yeah interestingly we did a third part of this investigation which is not related to this the third part spoke about a 2016 apollo kidney racket case which has gone nowhere why it has not gone nowhere because the court has said to the police you have not investigated the hospital that it says that it you know it's such a shoddy probe that it's unbelievable that such a scam or racket can happen without the knowledge of the hospital which is what is your question is and there are 31 hearings the investigation officer has been changed the the, the police relied on the clean sheet given by the hospital's probe the court is saying we will not take cognizance of the charge sheet unless you investigate the hospital you know so what we did was we wanted to show that that good this this investigation is on but justice you know seems to be so you know it's very hard and why do we assess that is the case that the investigation officer is not probing one of the largest hospital chains in india so again i have to go back on kidney racket cases our kidney racket cases are generally on a syndicate a recipient and a donor that's all it has been so far this investigation takes it a little bit forward in terms of an noc or form 21 from a foreign embassy and then we have investigated the dark and dirty of medical tourism the charge sheet does not say anything when we looked at scrutinized we saw a pattern we also saw a pattern of this fake family trees now how police takes it forward because the law is that this case is being investigated for criminal conspiracy cheating so they could question more people it doesn't stop them from but how we still don't know because the 2016 case is a stark illustration that it goes nowhere you know it, this is just a dead end and conan the people who were the victim of this kidney racket were they coerced essentially the poor that's a pattern they come from very poor backgrounds that is something that's easy to be easily proven you know one of the key witnesses uh, who's given his 164 statement is a poor man from bangladesh who says i came here for a job they forced me i didn't know about it but then he gave me 3 lakh rupees so i forcibly underwent a kidney donation you know so they come from a very very poor and not just the bangladeshis even the rackets recently they have been kidney rackets you know in delhi from other hospitals yeah it's it's the same pattern right these kidney rackets they prey on people who are poor and they promise a certain amount but in a lot of cases the people don't even get the amount they are promised right yes and now also what has happened is uh, a lot of things are happening uh, through social media facebook two kidney rackets that have been uncovered by investigation agencies mostly you know posting on facebook and asking them and luring them people who are very desperate for money and that's how it is happening and conan you mentioned how prevalent kidney rackets continue to be we hear about them all the time can you talk about why that is the case why do we see these rackets for kidney specifically it's because it's the supply demand mismatch you know i mean just to put it very bluntly you wouldn't hear this in uh, a heart transplant okay you would hear only this in kidney transplant because you can survive with one kidney and not everyone would come forward to donate but there is desperation for people who are suffering from a chronic kidney disorder it's a big hope you know you can survive for a lot of years once you get a, a right donation and then you have fixed your lifestyle it changes when you you survive so there is a lot of desperation that is you know there here and then this desperation on the side poverty you know so that's the situation so you would never hear this in other human organs but for kidney because people who donate also can survive and recipients from the donation also can survive so it's like that and this desperation from both the sides family sides who can shell out money who are rich and then this whole problem also is big chronic uh, kidney disorder you know we are moving into l- such severe lifestyle related disorders kidney disorders is at the top 5 of you know just below cancer You are listening to three things by the Indian Express. 
Today's show was written and produced by me, Shashank Bhargav, and was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can tweet us at Express Podcasts and write to us at podcast at IndianExpress.com.